All right. Well, good evening, everyone. Awesome. Um, great to have you here with us in the uh, sanctuary and certainly excited to have you guys that is joining us online as well. Um, I'm Elder Guy and I will be uh, sharing the word with you tonight. Bible study excited as we um, continue really talking about spiritual warfare. We'll be digging a little bit into uh, the whole armor of God. Um, so always, as always, remember to like, share, um, send. I was talking to somebody out in the hallway earlier. He was talking about sending the uh, Bible study out to different people as well. So please make sure you go ahead and share that so we can get the gospel of Jesus Christ all across the globe. Amen. Um, as always, we want to keep our um, any of those that are sick and shut in. Um, I know there was a few different persons in the hospital, so certainly praying for them. And then there's a lot of persons as well um, that are um, in bereavement. So we certainly lift up those families and our church family as well. All right, I think that's it. If that's not it, I'll see if our media team pop anything else up on the screen that I need to announce. But if not, we are ready to rock and roll. All right, so the month of May, okay, yep. Month of May, remember Bishop was talking about this on um, Sunday, bring one unsaved person to church. Um, so for the month of May, so in, invite those persons that you've probably been praying for. Um, and along with that, I know Bishop was saying that we want to be praying for our family members as well. But for the entire month of May, whether it's the 8 o'clock service, the 11 o'clock service, you know what? You can invite them, I think, to even Bible study. Maybe that person um, may be a little hesitant to come to a Sunday service, but you say, hey, come to a Bible study with me, and maybe it kind of warm them up for a Sunday service. But for the month of May, let's be praying. Um, I think there's a lot of spiritual warfare that takes place when people are trying to make that decision to give their life unto Christ as well. So we, we definitely want to be praying as well. Anything else we need to announce? I think that might be it. Awesome. So as we're going through the Bible study tonight, um, whether you're here in the sanctuary, remember you can, you know, you don't have to wait until the end to write down those questions and give it to our media team so that we can, as we're going through it, we can start looking at the questions and be ready to rock and roll with them during the Q&A portion. Um, but if you're online as well, remember in the chat, you can go ahead and add any questions that you may have as well. I encourage people, the moment that question comes to your mind, send it through or write it down because if you wait, you might forget about it. So um, certainly send those questions through as well. All right, so we'll be talking about the whole armor of God um, tonight. So we'll be looking at Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 12. So again, Bishop Thomas has been talking about spiritual warfare. Um, Bishop covered this scripture dealing with the whole armor of God a little bit last week. And so that's why I just want to stay right there. Um, we're not going to talk about every piece of the armor. I just want to look at these first three verses. Um, as always, encourage people in your own time, please read all of Ephesians chapter 6, um, especially verses 10 through 20. But we're just going to look at verses 10 through 12. All right, so let's go ahead and, and dig in. So verse uh, 10, Ephesians 6, verse 10, in the King James Version. It says, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And so what we're going to do, and we're going to look at the amplified translation of that in a moment. So what we're going to do is just kind of walk through the scripture and break it down um, as we're looking at it. And remember, we're talking about spiritual warfare. So tonight, our focus is on spiritual warfare. Um, we're not talking about the battles that we have in the natural. We are, we, we're going straight to the top, uh, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. So we're dealing with the unseen area. And so I want to kind of cue that up a little bit, um, because sometimes, even though we say we're talking about spiritual warfare, we still try to look at it from a carnal perspective. And I think sometimes we get the, the emotional aspect mixed up with the spiritual. Um, how many people have ever been in a, a church service and, you know, maybe, you know, we were like praising God. And have you ever stopped and be like, is this spiritual or is it just emotional? Talk about yourself, right? I know I've done that. You know, so somebody, come on, let's give God praise. And it's this automatic response, you know. 
Um, I was sharing with my wife, Tremaine, you know, the IMA service when we had it here, the last night, that Wednesday night IMA service. I got up and I said, good evening, everybody, you know? And it was like, uh, good evening. It was like people were ready to like, like go in and have church like with good evening. And, I was like, and on the inside, I was like, no. Because there was, it, it, was, it was more that I wanted to say before we got into it emotional. So sometimes our emotions can go before the spiritual aspect and we never make it to the high place because we're so like, uh, ain't God good? You know, and we're like, yeah, God good, you know? And we just like jump in so quickly emotionally. But what I want us to do tonight, whether it's in the sanctuary or at home, let's just like take our time. And my prayer is that you'll be able to like sense something spiritually while we're going through the Bible study. I mean, like, tonight, silence our soul. I know you're, you're going to receive what, what's being taught by your mind, your will, your emotions. Got it. But my prayer is that tonight we'll be able to, like, tap into the spiritual realm, and, and we'll know it. We'll know that what I'm hearing, what I'm sensing is spiritual and not just emotional. Y'all following what I'm saying? Because again, so many times, because we're, we live in this physical body, we have emotions and everything, but so many times we lead with the emotions and we think that the emotional experience was a spiritual one, right? Um, man, I'm thinking about sometimes the different songs, like Nicole, I'm thinking about the song you sing, that um, Jesus, I forgot how I go. Y'all know what I'm talking about? It's, Oh, pray, yeah, oh, yeah. So that song, whoo, it can cause, like, people to be laid out, right? And it can. But if not careful, we'll get so used to you singing that that you'll be trying to take us to a heavenly high place, but we so focus on just the natural, we won't go. And what will happen is, is that the person that's ministering will feel the struggle, They'll feel the push, but we just so excited, just like some of the song, like how that, I don't know, John, how that song started off, dun, 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 or whatever that song's done about, right? Y'all know, like, sometimes as soon as a song about to come on, you be like, oh, people get ready to fall out. <laughs> like, as soon as you hear that first key, you know, is that spiritual or is that just me feeling it? Okay, so maybe I can start with me feeling it, but do I make it to that spiritual place? You know, where Reverend Foster, when you praise dance, right? And people are like, oh, Reverend Foster praise dancing. And when you're rehearsing that dance, you're hoping that that dance will draw people closer to God. But people are looking at you dancing, and they're just caught up in the emotions. Or Zuri, uh, Zuri might be back there, and she's up here dancing. Y'all ever see her up here dancing, right? And the Spirit of the Lord, look at her standing up. The Spirit of the Lord can be like upon her, but because we're so caught up in the carnal, emotional part, we will miss it. Are y'all following what I'm saying? And so my prayer tonight is that we kind of like, and even if it take a moment, that's all right, and go home and continue to dig. Like, go past the physical Go past the emotional and see what God is saying in the spiritual realm. And, and, and I use this word practice, and somebody was like, well, I don't practice the presence of the Lord. What I mean is re rehearse it, like do it over and over and over and over again until it becomes a lifestyle. Until I believe that if we have a high level of expectation spiritually when we come in church, we will pull on the gift of people that's ministering. But if we have a low expectation, guess what we're going to get? A low result. You know? And, and some people wonder, like, why in certain nations and things like that, you know, why is there miracles and healings and all that kind of stuff? It's because it's like, I need God, who is a spirit. <laughs> 
You know, but I think sometimes we even look at God as it's like, hey, it's God. You know, like, like this common person. But if we come in with this spiritual expectation, right? Like, God, please, you know, help me, help me to tap into your presence, God. Help me to hear from you, God. Help me. And your neighbor constantly talking to you, and you're like, Lord, Jesus, please. Like, just, ah, you know? And you're trying to, what we call, get into the spirit type of thing and all of that. I, I'm telling you, when that minister gets up here, that's the worship leader to kick the service off, they, if they get up and we out here are ready for spiritual encounter with God, they're going to get up there, and if they ain't ready, they're going to freeze. I've seen it where someone got up to preach, and the spiritual atmosphere was so heavy that they, they almost passed out because the expectation of the people was to hear from God. I believe that. It can cause you to, like, whoa, I wasn't ready for this. And I'm not talking about the thing where it sounds like it's spiritual. Because if I ask us right now, hey, y'all, let's just release a praise unto God into, this, into the, the sanctuary. I bet you, like, everybody would be like, yeah, right? And then if we took a spiritual th- uh, thermometer or whatever that is, you know, and was like, okay, God, you know, no, like, how, how high is our spiritual reach for you, for real, for real? And I guarantee you, like, initially, it probably be like, you know, 25% because we just did it based upon because somebody told us to do it. If we keep at it, maybe it'll go a little bit higher. But there are certain people that are so used to just doing the, like, the religious thing, but never tap into the spiritual awakening of it. And I believe that this Bible study series is going to challenge us to not just get caught at the the normal, I mean, I challenge us, like, when somebody tell you, let's give God praise, just pause for a moment. Yeah. And check. Mm-hmm. Check. Like, check you. So if somebody says, come on, y'all, open up your mouth and give God praise. Be like, hold on, am I in the right place, God, to come to your throne right now? Okay, Lord, forgive me for my thoughts and forgive me, God. Holy Spirit, draw me to where you are. I want this to be a spiritual experience, God. I'm I'm thankful for the people that's around me. But Lord, 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 Lord. And then all of a sudden, the scripture where it says, from your bellies shall flow rivers of living water. Then it starts coming from here. Like sometimes it's just from here that we respond. You know what I'm saying? But it's like God is like, how can I, how can we get it from here? And sometimes it it takes a moment. But guess what? It's okay. And some of us as ministers, it's our fault. Because sometimes we'll get up there and we say, come on, give God praise. Oh, ain't nobody in here today? Oh, y'all sleeping today? Come on, get up on your feet and give God some praise. And sometimes what we're doing is we're trying to pump ourselves up, but we're trying to get you to help us get to where we should already be. And so uh, some of it is our fault because we get up there just looking for a response rather than waiting. You know, it's almost an awkward moment. You ever seen Reverend Patricia Earl? She get up here and she don't say nothing. You ever seen that? And don't it feel awkward? Okay, it feels awkward to me because I'm so used to someone getting up there. But what if a person gets up and they, they tell John and I'm like, don't, don't even play right now. And it's just quiet like this. That's awkward, ain't it? It feels like you're sitting in a room and somebody should be saying something, but nobody's saying anything. And then sometimes she speaks to scripture. And then you go into it. So I believe God is challenging us. Like, if your initial response is just emotional, okay. But don't stay there. Challenge the atmosphere for God to come tabernacle with us, to come dwell with us. I mean, for God literally to just come and just be like, man, this this is, whoo. Like, he can stretch out where we are. 
And it's not just for the ministers, for the praise and worship team, for the choir as well. Whoever, I don't, I don't care who it is, who, it, who the person, who the group is, whatever it is, if we come in with an expectation that God, I appreciate all these people, but I need to hear from you. We're going we're gonna to pull on what we call, we're pulling on the anointing. We're, we're pulling on the, the wells of that person, that group, that dancer in that moment. So here's another example. I was about to say, amen? And I'm sure probably at least two, three, four, five, six people would like, amen, <laughs> right? But we're so, we're so accustomed to like just doing things. <laughs> If I say, ain't God good, God is good, and the person could be falling asleep. <laughs> I was in a church service one time, and a person was falling asleep, and they jumped up and was like, hallelujah. And it was like, what, they were right on, I mean, Elder Bordley, they were right on cue. Their hallelujah was right on clue. It was as if their flesh was so trained that even with them falling asleep, they were like, Hallelujah. And it's to the point sometimes where I can almost finish the words of what like, somebody is about to say or something like that because I know what they're, the next thing they're going to say. Y'all understand what I'm saying? But what we got to do is start checking all of that. If you start emotional, don't stay there. It is just like the tabernacle, right? So when you go from the outer courts to the inner courts to the most holy place, don't stay in the outer courts. Go into the holy place and then find yourself beyond the veil with God where only God speaks. Man, that's where I pray we get. We just be like, like Nicole, you just like, don't drop the mic, right? <laughs> you know, because the media team be like, did she really drop that mic? But you gently sat the microphone down and you can't even finish that song because the glory of the Lord has just come down so heavy in this place. And that's where God wants us to be. So it says, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That same verse in the Amplified Bible says, in conclusion, be strong in the Lord, be empowered through your union with him. Draw your strength from him, that strength which is boundless might provide, which his boundless might provide. So the important thing here is that our strength, so be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, the strength that we need is due to the union that we have with God. So again, we're talking about spiritual warfare. So be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. So the strength that we need for this life derives or come from our union with God. So the thing that I should really be chasing after the most is to stay in union with God. So if that's the thing that I need to be pursuing, what is one of the things that the enemy is going to be coming after me the most, trying to get me to be disunited with God? God is saying, come on, be connected because that's where your empowerment comes from. That's where your strength, and that word strength is like an increasing, like you just keep growing in that strength, but it comes from union with God. But then it talks about, and the power of his might, and I love the way the Amplified says it, that strength which his boundless might provides. So that means that there is no limit to the amount of strength, spiritual strength we're talking about, which can also exude itself through natural strength, but the amount of strength or might or ability is boundless, meaning there's no limit to it. Like there's no plateau in God. You know, like you can't get too spiritually strong in God. You can't say that that's enough. You know, like, it, it just keeps going and going. And I love it. It's like when um, the oil was pouring, and it wasn't until they didn't have um, any more vessels left. This is when dealing with Elijah, the, the woman that had the crew of oil. They, it, the oil didn't stop running until there was no more vessels left. 
right? So it's like God is like, uh, one scripture talks about he is the many-breasted one. He is our provider. So he's not going to stop pouring unless we can't receive it no more. But what if it's just like, God, just, 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 you know, like, oh, man, like you just keep bringing uh, uh, vases and you just keep bringing barrels and barrels. And you're like, God, pour into this area of my life and pour into that area, God, and pour into this area, into my life, mine. And then through me, God can do some amazing things. But his might his ability is boundless, like Lord Jesus. So that's the reason why the scripture says, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we dare ask or think according to the power that works within us. So if that power is working, God's like, let's go. <laughs> there's no bounds, there's no limits. It's us that just be like, this, this, too, this, this is too much. I don't know if you've ever had a moment when you're reading the word and you just like, like, that can't be what that means. Like, why we do that sometimes? Sometimes we shut down or we quench the Holy Spirit because of this. But I believe God is challenging us just like, just, just, just like, just let go spiritually. Stop being afraid of what's on the other side. Let us stop being afraid of what we're going to have to let go of if we just go, if we spend more time in the word or, or we spend more time in prayer or, or this Sunday, I'm not going to sit next to that person that talked to me a lot. This is one of the reasons why I sit on the front pew. Just being honest, sometimes I, I don't want to see everything that's going on. I can hear it, and I may turn to the side so I can see certain things, but sometimes I go to the front because I, I just I want less distractions. And sometimes I, I don't, I like sitting in the back up there because the chairs are blocking. So for me, just for me personally, sometimes I just, or sometimes I close my eyes when we can. Sometimes we got to leave our eyes open for certain things that we're doing. But sometimes I just want to close my eyes, like just. And you, know, and you open your eyes, and sometimes you don't even want to open your eyes and the service is going on, but you just want to stay right there. But you're like, I guess God move on. But I believe that there's coming a time, and I don't know when, uh, I don't know, but, but people are going to get stuck in the spiritual realm, and it's a good thing. But sometimes we, we, we pull ourselves out. I mean, how many times have God ever said to you, that's enough? Come on out of my presence. Have God ever said that to you? Like, that's enough. Like, you need to move on now. You've been in my presence long enough. Go on. See you tomorrow. See you next Sunday. It's us that's like, I think I need to come out now. It's us that, and I'm talking about even at home. I think that's enough now. My TV show about to come on. And we tell ourselves things like, my TV show is going to help me grow and all, like, But God is saying, there, so if you, you know, whether you're here in the sanctuary or you're online, my prayer is that you're, you're starting to kind of visualize like, man, what, what would that be like? Um, there's a song called, I Can Only Imagine. Y'all know, you know? <clears throat> it says, surrounded by your glory, <laughs> what will my heart feel? Will I dance before you, Jesus, or in all? Be still. I mean, you know, but have you, have you felt that here on earth? You know what I'm saying? Like, you just like, oh, Lord, Jesus, I can't see his throne, but I, I sense that this, this is what it's like, the throne of the Lord. 
That is a deep place, but it's a place that we should go to. <laughs> and it's not meant just for the people of the prophetic. Sometimes we think, oh, man, you got the prophetic gift so you can see the, the, you know, the elders throwing down their crown at the, at the throne and all those different things. It's not. Like, we're made in the image and likeness of God. So we have the ability, spiritually, to ascend to a higher place and feel the presence of the Lord. It's not meant just for that spooky person. <laughs> you know, that person that rocks back and forth and they, they go, mm, mm. it's not just meant for that. It's meant for all of us. But for some reason, we've kind of categorized it and said it's just meant for certain people. It's all of us, all of us, ascending to that higher place in God, as Paul said. He said, I don't know if I was in the body or out of the body. I'm not quite sure. So the scripture in Philippians 4.13, the kind of tying into this boundless place, it says that I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. So question is, how many things can we do? Like all, right? And so I don't know about you, but sometimes immediately it's like, like does all mean all though? Like Rachel is, I mean, like, is it like all? You know what I'm saying? Like all? Because I got some things in my life that I don't know if all is inclusive of that. So, but here's what God's saying. Why don't you just try it? Like, just believe that you can do all things. It's not just you that's doing it. You're doing it through Christ. I love how the Amplified says it. I have strength for all things in Christ, here's that word again, who empowers me. I'm ready for anything and equal to anything through him, I love this word, who infuses wow. inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Man, what? <laughs> you go home, if you just Google it, because it, it takes a moment. You'll be like, that's a whole lot. And what the Amplified does is takes, whether it's the Hebrew or the Greek, and just it infuses it into the King James Version or, or into the different scripture to pull it out more. But when you read that, I mean, just that last part, I am self-sufficient, not by myself, but in Christ's sufficiency. So that means that whatever God needs for me to do, I can do it in Christ. So there it is. So it's not just me doing whatever I want to do. It's whatever God wants me to do, I can do all those things that he wants me to do in Christ. Who strengthens me to do everything that God wants me to do? <laughs> so God says, I want you to do this. And you're like, in and of myself, I ain't got it. But in Christ, I got it. I can do all things. That's Philippians 4.13. So we go to verse 11 now in Ephesians 6, 11. Here we go. Put on the whole armor of God. So we're, um, during this Bible study, we're not going to talk about the whole armor, the, the shield, and all of that. We're, we're just staying right in this section here, these first three, three verses. It says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The armor is not mine. So that's the first piece. And I think sometimes, and this is the reason why we want to keep out the, the going through the next scriptures for a moment and everything. You can read it on your own time, the part where it talks about your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel and all of that. But let's just stop right here for a moment. Put on the whole armor of God. So the armor that I'm putting on for this spiritual warfare is armor that God is giving me, which comes from his strength. So because of my union with God, when, every time I engage with God, he gives me armor. Whoo, Jesus. So that means that every time I'm disengaged with God, I'm not putting on my armor. 
right? So every time I'm in God's presence, he's given me the armor that fits me for the battle that I have to face because we're talking about spiritual warfare. So the armor is not armor that I'm picking out that I think I need, nor is it armor that somebody else think that I need. And this is the part that's, that gets very deep, and I want to look at um, the life of David for a moment. So if you remember this, so remember Jesse told his son David, you know, go take some bread and cheese to your brothers, da 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 David's like, hey, this uncircumcised Philistine, he's ready to fight Goliath, and then he goes to Saul, and Saul says to him in 1 Samuel 17, 38 through, uh, through 40, and Saul armed David with his armor, not David's armor, right? Because David didn't have no armor. All he was doing was bringing bread and cheese and all that stuff, right? So Saul goes into his chambers, pulls out Saul's armor, and says, David, you need to put this on. And he put on a helmet of brass upon his head, and also he armed him with a coat of mail. So he's giving him all his stuff. All the stuff. Verse 39. And David girded his sword. Whose sword? Saul's sword. David didn't have a sword, right? <laughs> so he, he got Saul's sword upon his armor. So he takes Saul's sword and puts Saul's sword in Saul's armor. And he tried to go. He is saved, which means that he tried to go for he had not proved it. In other words, David tried to move in Saul's armor, but he couldn't because he never used it. So, but at least he tried, right? So I, I don't know how big David was and if it looked crazy and foolish with him wearing it. I don't know. But all we know is that Saul went Hey, put this on. He put it on out of obedience and all of that to the king. And then he tried to move, but he couldn't because he never proved that that armor could work for him. And so that's the reason why I'm saying sometimes we got to be careful when someone comes to us and says, this is the way that you do spiritual warfare. Do it this way. Listen to this song. Do it this way. Pray like this. Do it like that. Now, if you're a, a young person in your relationship with Christ, you may need something to pattern yourself after, right? So you come and somebody says, hey, you know, if you just read these scriptures, um, you know, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and pray that. And you'd be like, okay, because I don't know what else to do. But that's not the case with David. David had been in battle before. So this was not someone coming that was a novice. For a novice, maybe you say, hey, this is how you pray. I remember uh, Deacon Horton, when I first gave my life to Jesus Christ, I, I wasn't quite sure how to pray. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, pray, pray. Pray like I heard the other people pray. And so I used to hear people pray, Father God, y'all ever hear them and if there's anybody here that still does that, no, no offense, but there was a whole bunch of Father Gods I used to hear. Father God, I thank you so much, Father God. And you know what I started doing? That's how I prayed. And you know what? It helped me until I spent more time with God and God said, this is the armor for you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So sometimes what we do is we stick to the armor that was given to us by someone else when we was a novice in our relationship with Christ. But instead of us seeking God and saying, God, thank you for that foundation, but now I'm ready to go higher. What is the armor that I need for this battle called life? Will me saying, Father God, thank you so much, Father God, for doing it, Father God, is that going to help me where I am now? If it does, work it out. But if it's not, stop. And we know when it's no longer working. If you don't pray like that at home, somebody said it's official. <laughs> uh, but, like, if you don't pray like that at home, don't pray like that in the public. So it's kind of like, you know, 
I don't have a prayer life at home, but in public, I want to act like I got a prayer life, so I'm going to put on the prayer garment that I see other people doing because they get a good response. That is not good. (laughs) Because God has armor for you. And he's waiting for you to go in the closet, spend time with him, and put on the armor that is meant for your life based upon the battles that you're having. But if you are still wearing the armor from where you were 12 years old in your relationship with Jesus Christ, and you 35 now, you don't fit that no more. But it takes that union with God. It, it, just spending time in the word. And, and God starts saying things like, okay, instead of like doing this, do this. And now what's happening is the Holy Spirit is leading me into a deeper relationship and union with God, which means the deeper I go with God, the more unique the armor he is going to give me. Because where I am in my life right now, the armor that I was wearing before, it don't quite fit. Or I don't need armor covering this no more. I need armor covering my back. Or I don't need just a big sword. I need a smaller one. But if I just keep taking or or sticking to the things that used to work without seeking God and saying, hey, like go, go, and go to men's warehouse and, and, and let, I'm talking about in the, in the spiritual, and let them measure out the new armor you need to wear. Allow the presence of God to measure your wingspan, to measure your neck, to check out what size shoes you need, to check out your hands and your strength. Like, can you still carry that shield like you used to? Do you even need what you used to have? There is unique armor for you. But it, it, it will evolve from union with God. Man. It's like open up a treasure chest, and it's like, all that was there for me? <gasps> so you mean tell me I've been wearing this small outfit for this long time? And you had all that for me? And if that's the awakening moment that God has given us right now, let's just wake up and say, God, I'm going to seek you with all of my heart because I want to be wrapped up in what it is that you have for me for this walk. And it says that David... He couldn't fit that which Saul gave him. So what did he do? He took his staff in his hand. So now David, David's staff, he chose for himself or him five smooth stones. And he put it in his shepherd's bag and even the script. And his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistines. So that just saying that do not allow other people to put on you their armor when you know that you cannot fit that. So the next part here is put on the whole armor of God. Again, it's God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. I thought this was very unique. This wow, so your version may say schemes or strategies, but check this out. This is just type of thing. So methodia, so the Greek word methodia, right, looks like method, right? It is a compound of, I'm going to mess these words up, meta and hodeo. Meta meaning change afterward. So that means that I did something. And the next word there, hodeo, means travel or journey. So look at this, the wiles of the devil. So this, if you can see this, the enemy is traveling, and, and I'm going to look at this next verse, which is going to tie it in. The wiles or the schemes or the tra- strategy of the devil is literally going about traveling, collecting data, and then saying, I'm going to shift the way that I attack this person based upon the data I collected. So if, if I'm not 
growing in God, in Christ, and I'm just doing the same thing, the enemy is just collecting data. And so for an example, collect data collection could be whenever someone looks at this person this way, they get real upset. upset. He's like, shoot, I can use that. I've been trying to attack this person from this direction. It's not working. But based upon my travel or my journey, I'm going to change my scheme or my strategy, and I'm going to come from this direction. Because I realize that in studying their life, they get upset when this button is pushed. Or during this season of their life, when the weather changes, they get grumpy. So what I'm going to do, so I've collected that data, I'm going to use that information so that I can shift the way that I'm going to attack them. That makes sense? And so if, if I'm just doing the same thing and I'm not growing, then the enemy can use the same data to keep attacking me. That means he doesn't even, don't even need to change. Because I didn't change. Because I didn't transform. Because I'm stuck. And this is one of, a great example of this one that I was talking about a little bit before, is that, you know, like picking on different people in the audience, not picking on them, but mentioning their name. So Val gets up here, and you know, she's, she's about to lead us in the song, and she's like, come on, let's lift up your hands, stand on your feet if you can, and let's go ahead and open up our mouths and just begin to say something unto the Lord. Right. And so let's just say that this person who is a new believer in Christ, they only give God praise when they are commanded or told to do so. Right. And it's working. Right. Because they it's new. So, you know, so Val gets up and says, come on. And that person says, OK, yep, yep, yep. And they begin, God, thank you so much for who you are and all that kind of stuff. Right. So no, 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 no. They're still doing it. But let's just say that years go on and they don't grow. So the enemy says, wow, and they don't praise God at home. So the only time they praise God is when they come to church and when Val says it. Anybody else can get up there and, not want, and they don't know. But when Val, for some reason, says it, they want to give God praise. And so the enemy collecting that data saying, okay, okay, okay. So what would I do if I knew the only way you're going to praise God is on Sundays and when the praise and worship team comes up and says it? My scheme or strategy is I got to get to you before you can get to that place. So I'm going to overwhelm you, put pressure on you, mess you up mentally. So the next time they say, give God praise, you're like, in the spiritual realm, you're like this. And guess what's happening? We're not connecting with God. And the enemy is like, that's it. That's all I want. See, you can be in here, but not connect. And so don't think it's strange when you, like, on your way to church to what you're normally used to doing, and something, like I was preaching on Sunday, like the winds just go, hit you. And you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. I always go to church, right? This is usually easy for me. But it is possible that the enemy is like, hold on, okay, all right. They only praise God on Sunday, check, and then it's only when the praise and worship team, it's not when the choir sings, it's just when the praise team gets up and sings, check. Ooh, so if I can mess them up, I mean overwhelm them in their mind to the point where the praise team gets up and sings even their favorite song, but they so messed up, they can't connect with God. So how do I switch that? Start praising God at home. Like, change your routines. Like, drive another way. Wake up earlier. But not just to check the box, to connect with God. Every day, I wake up and I read a little scripture. Okay, so every day they wake up and they still go to work with a bad attitude. Okay, so... I'm going to mess with them. They ain't going to get no sleep at night. So they ain't gonna even going to want to wake up and read the Bible in the morning time, which is going to cause them not to connect with God like they used to, and I got them. 
But when I grow in God, the Holy Spirit is able to shift me into different areas. And it's not me trying to be all deep and strategic. I'm following the leading of the Holy Spirit because God is saying, yo, that armor that you were using like 10 years ago, like you need something more because the enemy is checking you out and is collecting data. And based upon the data, they're changing their method. And that's where the attack is coming from. And the idea is to get us to become disengaged with God so that I cannot put on the armor that he needs for me for the next battle that is in store. Amen? I want to get to Q&A. Of course, there's more slides and everything, but if you guys can... Come on, and we'll see what questions we have and dig into it, see what questions or comments you guys have as well. I'm going to, oh, you probably got it too. Any questions in there? (laughs) No questions. What y'all got? Anything? (laughs) <laughs> I, I like how you talked about how you outgrow your armor. Yeah. Because I thought about it, you know, like a lot of times we might have grown up in the same church. Mm. And, you know, we went through the routine and we grew up and then we still do the same thing. Yep. But our mind hasn't changed as far as the group. My mic's not, it's on. Not picking up. Again. Yep, go ahead. You go ahead. Okay. Yep, yep. But, but, you know, it, it, it made me think about when we start to grow in Christ and worship God, yeah. how our assignment and whatever God has for us, yeah. the, the armor that we need protects us for whatever it is. Yeah. And then I was thinking about, I was reading, uh, what was it, Ephesians 2, and it was talking about, and I used the Amplify, but it talked about the prince and power of the air talking about yeah. Satan. Yes. So then you said how he's looking, collecting data. <clears throat> I thought about a drone, how he's looking, yeah. collecting the data, yep. how we always have to be prepared. <laughs> the balloon. Right, right. We have to be prepared for whatever he's trying to give to yep. us. Because I remember, you know, just being in the military when we had to wear the IOTV, mm-hmm. the armor that we wore, yep. it was made specifically for us. Whatever our job or our assignment was, yeah. we had to have certain type of armor. That's right. And that's the same thing with the body of Christ. Yeah. But we have to take that time to spend with God, and yep. then as we evolve and grow spiritually, yep. so does our armor, and so does our insight, and what God is trying to tell us, because he's teaching us as we go. He is. And Amen. being intentional in what we're doing. Yeah. Amen. But I, the thing is, we have to be intentional, and we're creatures of habit. Right. And sometimes we do things, and it's just routine. Yep. But we're not really getting what God is trying to tell us. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I would like to add on to that. <laughs> Everyone's battle can be somewhat different in terms of what we are warring against. Yeah. Because everybody's not warring against the same thing. That's right. You know, some might have some lust issues. Some yeah. might have some, right. some jealousy issues, right. things yeah. of that nature. And I'm going to get back on to what you said about, you know, how the enemy can want to attack you. He, he always likes to do it when you're on your way to church. <laughs> you're in the car, and, and something just ain't going right, so you're driving here, and, 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 and you gotta, you, you have a, what you call a woof out moment before mm-hmm. you get into the door. Okay. Yeah. But sometimes it doesn't work. Right. You know, so you have to really be prayed up, because yep. the enemy's gonna do anything and everything they can oh, do yeah. to make sure that you don't worship him. Right. Because that's what we're here to do. We're here to worship him. That's it. You know, and if, 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 if Val is the one you're looking for, and Val ain't here <laughs> today, <insane>. right. <laughs> you know, I mean, so be it. Yeah. But yeah. If, you're, if, if, if your needs to seek his face, right. you're going to do it anyway. And yeah. it doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter who it is. But, yeah. and, and, and no I think, offense, Val. Yeah, yeah. Uh, people are going to be like, who's Val <laughs> after this? <laughs> They're going to be looking for her now, uh, singing. But, you know, but even like the drive into church thing, right? Um, So if I ask, you guys don't have to raise your hand, but how many people feel like they're challenged when they're coming to church? There may be some people like, I ain't got no problem on on that. that, That's not my thing. But as you begin to survey and say, okay, but what is is that area 
you know, that it seems as if the enemy every once in a while tries to come in and, and attack. And I think we have to do that. We have to go to a higher place, go into prayer, and ask God by the Holy Spirit, show me these areas that it seems that the enemy is spying out and he's, he's trying to strategize to come. Not that I want to be all scared about it. Nah, I'm in, I'm in Christ, right? So this is not like, oh my goodness, I'm afraid. It's just that, hey, you know, like I want to make sure that I'm spending time with God so when these things come, it's not catching me off guard. Right. But the enemy knows what your weak spots are. I mean, he, he, he knows just as well as you do. Right. Through the collection of data, right? right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, by observing. Um, one of the scriptures uh, that was going to pop up there, but I know you guys are familiar with it. It's in Job chapter 1, uh, I think it's verse 7. But it says, And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and right. from walking up and down it. So that's confirmation that the enemy, even then, now we know Satan is just one, right? So he's not omnipresent and everything, but he has demons and all of that as well. So we know that even the strategy of Satan is constantly looking and collecting data like, hey, man, I'm trying to check something out. And of course, it goes into the life of Job with that there. Amen. Any questions in there? If not, I can... Uh, I'll throw out some faults to you guys. No question. No question. No question. Oh, well, one, one is coming up. Okay. So how do you, as a worship leader or minister, stay in the place of spirituality while still doing the work of ministry? Yeah. So we have to take this time um, to worship God. And, and I think even for, well, I'm sure all of you guys know this as well. Like, don't equate service to worship. That's correct. And don't equate religious uh, activity to spiritual development. Right. So just because I'm in church, that does not check the box for spiritual development. Um, if it's a worship leader or a leader that's singing or a preacher or whatever the case is, I can be ministering but not growing in my relationship with God. Mm -hmm. So guess what? The, the song that I'm singing on Sunday cannot be the same essence that's refreshing me. I can get some of it, the word that I'm preaching on Sunday. It can't be, well, since I'm preaching it, I'm good. No, you better sit yourself down somewhere and receive your own portion, right? Like it, you know, so if I'm singing here, I need to be receiving here. If I'm preaching here, I need to be re receiving here. Because when I dispense out, it's lowering my well, rivers of living water. So I've got to constantly keep refreshing myself. And that may mean at times, I got to take a break. And sometimes we don't want to do that. I mean, what are we going to do if John is not here? But guess what? What I don't want is John, see, people are going to be looking at you now, right? Because <laughs> he's always up there. But what I don't want is John playing, and he's just blank. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen somebody like, they there, but they ain't there? Right. What's happening is that they're getting low. They're getting very low in, in regards to their well. So out of your belly, belly shall flow rivers of living water. So we have to, so there's a scripture that says those who, uh, I'm going to mess it up. But those who fresh, refresh or water others, them themselves shall be refreshed and all of that. Don't take that scripture as, as I dispense to you, you know, uh, heaven just going to rain on me. No, you better go spend some time with God so that you can be in the position that heaven can rain on you. Like, don't just minister and think, well, because I'm ministering, I'm just automatically going to get back. No, go somewhere <laughs> Sit down in God's presence and allow God to pour into you. I heard somebody talk about having an empty spirit, and it can lead to this place of depression and lowliness. It's because I'm not refueling myself. I keep dispensing. And I share this a lot when I'm in, in counseling sessions. Like, we carry two buckets. One is for us. One is for the people that we pour into. 
And sometimes we're constantly pouring and pouring, but we never check our bucket. So imagine you up on the hill, and you, along the way, you've refreshed all these people. You get to the top, and you're like, yo, I don't have nothing for me. And now I'm alone, and I feel, you know, like the prophet Elijah, I just want to die, and all that kind of stuff. It's real. It's real. And so you got to take time for yourself. That's, so, that's very important. And I've run around here. Y'all see me running around here. And I think I said it during the Bible study one time. You see me running around here going crazy. Y'all stop me and say, yo, you all right? And y'all do that. And I appreciate it. You're like people, they do. They look and say, yo, you, you all right? You taking care of yourself? I appreciate that. It's, it's like gripping the person up and say, yo, your eyes is bloodshot red. You need to go home and go to sleep. Because guess what? If you're not well, you ain't functioning to your optimum capacity anyway. Right. right. Amen. So go to a conference. I'm talking about for these people that's always ministering. Go, go to an afternoon service and just sit in the back or something like that. And that's one of the reasons why I sit on the front seat so that I can just receive. Like, I, I don't want, no, mm -mm. you can call another minister, you, you know, to do that <laughs> <laughs> All right, sir. All right. Okay. Yeah, like a minister don't show up. It's like, can you do scripture prayer? Like, no, man, I just want to receive, y'all. But we got to do it. You got to take care of yourself. You got yep. a question. Yep. How do you know you are pouring from an empty place? It's that, that place, of, again, I'm going to go back to this place of depression, this place of lowliness, this place of, you know, like, um, Purpose seem as if it, it's, I don't know my purpose. You start questioning yourself. Yeah, yep. yep, you start, you do, you start doubting. And it's almost the same thing that I was talking about on Sunday when the disciples, they were going to the other side and then they started getting hit with some things. Mm -hmm. They started freaking out. It was kind of like, and I'm sorry if people are not used to that word. You know, they started acting out. They started, you know, and everything. Like, oh my gosh, you know. And you start questioning, and, and, and sometimes people start withdrawing. I don't know if I'm good enough. I, 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 confusion. An empty, if you can look at it this way, an empty well spirit will impact you emotionally. So it, it will impact, right? Because your spirit is supposed to refresh your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions, right? So spiritual refresh my mind, my will, my emotions. But sometimes we think, I'm tired, I'm depressed, let me watch more TV to refresh my mind, my will, my emotions, and we neglect the spirit. Right. So now I'm heavy on the soul, but my spiritual bucket is very low. So now the enemy is checking me out, and he sends a smack, and I'm done. Because... People don't like me. They looking at me weird. Mm -hmm. I think they can tell there's something wrong with me. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just stop showing up. Yep. Isolation, you know, like Elijah. Just I'm, gonna, I'm the only one. I'm the only prophet. It's only me. Jonah, you know. Yep. So that's how you know. You just, like, it, 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 it messes with you mentally. And I believe this. And we, we can wrap it up unless there's another question. There is this area of mental health, a lot of it is dealing with we're not refueling ourselves spiritually. Yeah. And we're, we're, we're down here trying to fight these battles and, you know, we're doing things that's called spirituality. But it's not connecting with the, the one and true living God that knows how to give you exactly what you need. So I'm trying this, 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 and all of that. And so if we need counseling, if we need therapy, let's do that. But please do not neglect your spiritual growth. Don't stop reading the word just because you're taking medicine now. Yep. Or because you're receiving information from a therapist, don't stop worshiping and praising God and playing that music. So watch how much, you got two buckets, your spiritual bucket and then your soul bucket. So watch how much you pouring into the soul bucket, you gone, you walking like this now. Now you're lopsided. Not you're not balanced. Amen. 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 Well, praise Jesus. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Thank you all for joining.
Woo, thank you all for joining. Amen. I forgot to mention that Bishop Thomas was at Dell State tonight, <laughs> if y'all didn't know that. Uh, IMA was having a youth service tonight, um, and he was there. I think he was actually speaking at the youth service and everything. So he'll be back next week um, to continue to talk about spiritual warfare um, as we dig in. Please, I encourage everybody, if you do not have anything to meditate upon this week, Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. Dick, it's a lot of meat and potatoes in there. Get your commentary, get your all, you know, your study stuff. Get back to that. Get like get a get your Bible, highlight it, open it up, read it. I know you can see everything online. I use online like I don't know what. But like set aside some time to physically touch the word of God. As you're praying, have the scriptures open and be and be praying. You know, I can do all things through Christ. I mean, for real, let's like really like do this. Um, and we're going we're gonna to feel the difference if we're doing it on Sunday. We'll feel the difference. That's kind of a test for us, right? Yeah. So if we're doing it, we're going to feel the difference in what we release into the atmosphere. Amen? I don't know who the worship leader is, but I pray for him on Sunday. <laughs> Father, thank you so much for who you are. Thank you for your word. Holy Spirit, we trust you. You are the teacher your, Jesus even said that you're the ones that's going to bring back to our remembrance what it is that we need to know. So I pray, Father, right now that all of us that's in the sanctuary, all of us that's online, and even the ones that will hear this at some point, that all that word that's in us, that when we were younger or whatever it was, whatever platform we receive, all that word that is there, yes. but for some reason it just seems like it's kind of buried. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will help bring it back to our remembrance. And I pray that we will get excited just by when we read your word and it will lead us into a place of praise and worship and high expectation. Show us the armor that you need for us to put on. It's going to look for, different for each and every one of us, but help us to stay there as we get fitted. So, Father, thank you. We pray. Thank you for your peace encamp your angels around us to keep us in all of our ways. We even pray blessings upon Bishop Thomas as he's out ministering. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.